everybody so um this may or may not be my first uh youtube video i have another one that is probably should be the first but i don't know if i'm going to upload it by the time this comes up or if even if it's going to be a youtube video who knows but instagram is playing games with me i was about to go live on instagram to talk about this but they were trying to say that i am not eligible when i am and there's no other explanation the stuff would take forever to come up so yeah i don't know what's going on with you know about that um definitely tells me that i'm on the right path with like where I'm where I'm at with things right now but I'm not gonna let that stop me so I'm gonna talk about what I wanted to talk about so basically my biggest form of meditation right now is like biblio bibliomancy which is just kind of opening up a book just you know randomly picking uh, a message or you know something to read a hundred percent of the time is something useful for my life but I wanted to use that to talk about what I you know came across but also to kind of illustrate the way that the Holy Spirit works. The way that I understand the Holy Spirit and the way that it's worked in my life, I tend to look at it like an usher towards um, Christ consciousness or Christ or, you know, however you think about it. it. Ushers you into where you're supposed to be. Hebrews is associated with the wind or uh, Ruach. A lot of people like to essentially demonize certain channels for the Holy Spirit. So I made a video about this before, but uh, God pays attention to what channels you usually pay attention to and um, send you messages through those channels. So if you're always looking at um, tarot, they'll send you, he'll send you or, you know, they'll send you messages through that. Um, that's Holy Spirit. If you always look at, I don't know, you're a people watcher, send you messages through that. Um, if you are a swimmer or you like to take showers, um, and that's when you feel most relaxed or, or driving your car is like, God will send you messages through that. And so I don't like to limit the creator God at all. Um, I think trying to say like, oh, that's demonic. It's like, you really don't know the power of God for real. It's like, he allows these things to happen. And I think it's so he can use these things for Holy Spirit. So the devil might take you through some type of tribulation or whatever. He might allow the devil, you know, um, to take you this way. But the lesson that you learn from whatever that um, underworld journey or whatever brings you, always brings you back to Christ. God doesn't fight the devil. The devil fights God. It's like, there is, there is no war there um everything else is just a, a facade and so so it's like to think that god can't use any channel in the world of he created is like bizarre to me it's like so apparent to me now but anyway the the point is the way that the holy spirit moves is like that is the guy that is guiding you to look at this this specific tarot video at this time or that tells you to look at this book and open this page at this specific time or to go someplace and you meet and talk to somebody that you know just changes your like worldview is like it's like god's or you know the creator god's hidden hand i don't know if i like that reference but you know what i'm saying like it, it, it's an usher and it ushers ushers you towards truth so this particular experience with the holy spirit i'm um i think i was cleaning up this desk it's like i'm currently um packing and it's a lot i've lived here for a really long time so it's a lot of stuff to like little stuff to go through it's really irritating but anyway so i'm cleaning off the desk and this is like as you can see it's all, sorry god i don't <laughs> i feel like your bible is not supposed to be wrinkled and stuff but i've been bringing this little thing um places but anyway it's in the corner and it's like wedged under my thing like this like why would it ever be like that like how did it even get there i have no clue um but what it was uh stuck on was this it's almost like a guide of like when you're feeling this go to this go to this uh chapter or whatever um I mean, feeling this, go to this, whatever. So I'm looking at this. I'm like, I know, I, you know, I know these things. I know that this is important. So, um, you know, the way that God and the Holy Spirit kind of brings me to stuff. So I know this is important, whatever. So I look at it. I think what I deal with the most is anxiety, like literally since a kid. So I go straight to that. And there's um, four different passages and I go to all of them, all them joints hit. So I wanted to share, <laughs> I wanted to share, and I think it's useful for right now with navigating um, 
this time in life when we need a lot of discernment, we need a lot of trust in um, God, we need a lot of surrender and just staying, staying aware. And so, yeah, I'm gonna go through them. The, the beauty about the Bible is that no matter what you think, like if you think it's literal, if you think it's about astronomy or astrology, if you think it's, um, you know, historical, no matter what you think about the Bible is like, you're always going to get um, something from it. That's just life, you know, anything, not even just the Bible. But anyway, I'm going to read it so you can, you know, get your own things from it. And then I'm going to talk about what I got from it. And by the way, I think this is a Gideon's Bible. Um... I usually be trying to stick with the, uh, like the GSV from 1599, but yeah, either way, you know where I'm at. This is New Testament, not Old Testament. It's Gideon's take, do what you want with, do what you will with that information. And I'll be jumping around, but Psalms, uh, 46 verse two, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, even though the earth be removed. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. I'm skipping down to verse five. It says, God should help her just at the just at the break of dawn. So I feel like this is a very important part of what's what's going on right now. And I guess to me, what the middle path is all about. So I I think that I know. Like I'm in a lot of different spaces. So I'm in the like the spiritual tarot spaces. I'm in the like hardcore Hebrew Christian spaces. I'm in the military spaces. I'm in the Oracle spaces, like pretty much any space that I can like, I don't know, I can get something from everything. And I feel like every, every, no matter, you know, where you at with stuff, everybody knows that this time is very important. It's like, we all came back for this time. And this is a very big transitional period in um, human consciousness so it's it's really really big and so i think the love and light people and even christians who are like in denial about what's going on right now everybody think that they're gonna you know you're gonna be saved or like you know your your positivity you know takes you off off of this earth it's like i do believe that there is a 5d earth being born but it's like people trying to skip the shadow work there's a lot of stuff we got to clear out so i'm not under the thought process is that we won't have to do go through anything I do believe that your frequency determines what you will go through but I I think things are will definitely be happening I think through all this time I keep talking about Matthew 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 whatever because that kind of like started my journey back into the bible but um thing just stood out to me it's like I'll never forget it but it's wars and rumors of wars I don't know exactly what um verse I'll look it up in a second or I'll put it up on the screen if I edit it. But wars and rumors of wars. Why would they add rumors of wars? Why would they add rumors of wars? And yes, it could be like, oh, yeah, it's about to be a war over here. It's about to be a war over there, whatever. And I think that's valid. Again, I think you can get multiple things out of the Bible. But also, at the same time, I think it's talking about propaganda right now. And also just discernment is like the 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 people that are on their last, you know, breath or whatever, the the evil ones, the synagogue of Satan, whatever you want to, however you want to look at it, the one percenters, whatever, the reptilians, whoever you want to put to that, they, they are, they are on the way out. Uh, and they're going to try to take as many things and people and stuff with them. And they're going to try to tell you that this is happening. What really is this? Or like half of the stuff that um, the media you know, the media brings up and say, oh, it's the end of the world. Usually it's actually good stuff for us, bad stuff for them, but they have to get ahead of the narrative and make you cling to some negative aspect of it so you can manifest it for them rather than one, just knowing that everything is going to be straight no matter what, because like God can fight what are we talking about here. But also it's like, it's never what, it's never what you think it is. It's like always what you know and what you know should just be Christ always wins. You know, God always wins and it just, you know, it just is what it is, what it is. And they always talk about enduring, enduring to the end. And I think a lot of it is going to be mentally. It's like, yes, you know, it might be physically food, famine, whatever, all this stuff. It's like, I don't usually try to claim that even though if that is you know I'm prepared for that so I try to focus at least put my put my money on what I want to happen rather than thinking about what I don't want to happen so getting back to it is like the the mountains may be shaking 
the waters might be roaring, but it's like you really have to understand that you are always where you're supposed to be. In my notes, I wrote down this means to me from do doomsday prepper to real faith. So I used to be like a hardcore doomsday prepper. Like, um, like I still have a go bag, don't get me wrong. But, um, but I just thought that stuff was going to save me or being aware was going to save me. And it is like to some level it, it will, but really it's like you have to release everything and just trust God is like know that you're going to be in the right place at the right time you're going to connect with who you're supposed to connect to you're going to be covered from what you're supposed to be covered from you're going to go through what you're supposed to go through it just is what it is but just like yeah I don't know it kind of sound crazy but like God is what saves you it's like all this other stuff is just you know whatever it's like God is the one that sends the boat and we are in that darkest before dawn part of humanity and so like that is real faith to me it's like I know that I'm gonna be exactly where I'm supposed to be with who I'm supposed to be you know be with is gonna go down exactly how I was supposed to and I trust that you know my God can fight not to say that I'm not going to if I have to but you know it just is it just is what it is and I went down to five and said God shall help her just at the break of dawn I think the her is referring to the river that they talked about in four, if we're taking it literally. But to me, it's, it's the same thing as enduring to the end. It's like, just when it's so dark, you think like, how could, you know, where is God? How could this be a thing? It's like, that's when he comes up, you know, comes through, you know, with the swiftness and the quickness. And um, yeah, you just gotta, you gotta keep your mind straight. I'm gonna go down to one Peter five. Uh, what page? 1 Peter 5, chapter 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So obviously, if you take it literally, you may think that it just means like to not be drunk during this time. And um, and that may be a part of it, but uh, the Bible has so many cross, cross references. Anytime I'm like, unsure about the use of it I use the Bible to define itself so I usually go to uh, Bible Ga Gateway I think BibleGateway.com and put in I put in the word sober and then it brings up all the time sober was used it's rarely used as in like to not drink or you know to not um, do drugs or whatever it usually means a sober mind like that's literally we talk about loose and <clears throat> spiritual attack and all of that and right now this is going to be so important because of wars and rumors of wars it's like you're going to be you're going to have to be able to separate the fluff from Christ and God and like really listen and be obedient to spirit because that's the only thing that gets us through is like bullets money food none of that stuff gets gets people through it's really just like trusting God and having Having a, a open mind to be um, a sober mind to be obedient is like keeping your eye on you know the kingdom rather than being stuck on all these worldly stuff. You go back for this worldly stuff. You may you know be stuck here. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm going to Matthew six. Okay, so I'm skipping around. I'm going. Oh, okay. Matthew six twenty two. So this woo, uh, same thing kind of I was talking about before. So the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be filled of light. And so I think that is one, it goes back to like keeping a sober mind, having a positive outlook on stuff. Where do I write this down? And discernment, discernment, discernment is like the top of the top of everything. If everywhere you look, you see the doom and gloom, you see what can go wrong, what can blah 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 is like that is what you are going to manifest um like that's what you're meditating on and that is what's going to come into your life because this is a quantum reality and also gets into fruits knowing people by their fruits um because that that is literally the, the the key to discernment is like don't pay attention to what people look like on the outside that's identity politics that's why Hillary Clinton could be like, um, I got hot sauce in my bag or whatever. It's like, that is patronizing. Like, <laughs> I can't believe y'all feel for that. But, um, or if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Like, you, you got to watch people fruits. It's like, he's saying this, but it's like, he's the reason why your uncle is, you know, in jail off the three strike law that he wrote with his own fingers, like his own pasty fingers. It's like, what are we talking about here? But y'all be so... Could somebody say something nice to you? But anyway, 
keep your eye good and you'll see you'll see through everything you'll be able to maintain positivity in your life you'll be able to um see people as they truly are forgive not be in like low vibrational angry shameful energy okay so that that's that but going back to matthew 6 1 because this this whole this whole this whole um so i'm gonna just i'm gonna read it real quick take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them otherwise you have no reward from your father in heaven Therefore, when you do a charitable, charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. And assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable, charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret and your father who sees in secret with himself will reward you openly. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. And assuredly, I say to you, they will have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut, shut your door, pray to your father who is in, seat, in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use the vain repetitions as all the heathens do. For they think that they will be heard with their many words. <laughs> Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner, therefore, pray. Going to uh, verse 16. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. And surely I say to you, they have their reward. Skipping down to 17. Anoint your head and wash your face. So this to me is like, and it's so funny. I'm like laughing because God hates hypocrites just as much as I do oh it just burns burns my my insides up and like a lot of times with like organized religion is like the people is are what take me away from it and not to say that people can't be flawed or whatever it's like I don't mind that but it's always like the pot calling the kettle black and it's like you so worried about people being righteous or following the law or whatever it whatever it is that you're not even worried about your own salvation or your own connection to Christ or you know like it's always this is like that's born of the Elohim hijack of like none of this stuff is what is what Christ wanted it's like Christianity didn't exist until after Christ you know what I'm saying so this is rather than just like following his words they make it this this big thing that takes people off the off the middle path when everything that he's saying in this is like for, I don't know for some reason I want to cry but it's like everything he's saying in here is just is what it is like there's no other 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 place to take it and I don't mean by like taking taking the bible literally but it's like re religion is like a curated version of this that is like do what God said but like so it still fits in our culture is like there's a there's another passage. I'm like, I'm jumping all over the place. It's like I feel really emotional right now. But it's a enter by the narrow. This is um, Matthew seven, chapter 13, enter by the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are so many who go in by it like. As at some point point in history I'm sure like religion meant well I don't know actually but anyway like these organized religions are like a wide gate you can't tell me that's not what it is it's like the the left hand path is like they you know they try to you know say it's the whore of, uh, or you know Babylon or all this dark when really it's just like the Sophia consciousness it's like being connected with nature is like it's so many things and then that goes you know that get hijacks and goes too far into like human sacrifice right and then you have this other side is like the organized religion sky daddy side and they want you to say like i am a sinner i am wretched there's nothing that i can do to be better but to listen to this nigga on the pulpit rather than connecting with god christ like your creator like this nigga father that he's talking about this whole time. Like it's why am I so emotional now? 
But it's like everything is taking people away from Christ. It's like going this way. Well, all you had to do is go straight. Like, I feel sad for people that need like somebody to say, you are a sinner. Like, let me be your eye. Like, let me be your eye. You are a sinner. Let me be your eye. It's like it was never supposed to be like that. It was never supposed to be like that. Um, but the same, it, it's, it almost like breeds this energy because it wasn't, it wasn't born of Christ. So it's like the, the, the people that you know are like the most religious are like the worst people behind doors or these people are, you know, they're abusing kids or they're stealing money. All these things, it's like, that is not a coincidence. Um, so I think it's always so important. And it's like, what, what is being said in the Bible? Like that I don't get that we going on. It's like your connection with the father or what, you know, whatever. Like, it's just so obvious to me. There was another part. Um, oh, it's still in, um, Matthew chapter seven. I want to skip to um, 20. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. <laughs> this is hilarious to me. Um, <laughs> not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my father in heaven, many will say to me. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. <laughs> Have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Like, this is what I'm saying is like, just because you was pious, just because you went to church every day, just because you followed the law, just because you don't eat pork. Just because it, none of that stuff, <laughs> none of that stuff matters. <laughs> none of that stuff matters when it comes to like following Christ. It's like there's ways, it's like the important part of it is like setting yourself apart. Um, but there's a, there's a personal journey. There's other stuff outside of this stuff in the book that like to me is always obvious. It's like, even as a kid, I had a version of the stuff that I didn't really understand why. But like, once I know the Bible, I was like, oh yeah, that's why I hated that. That's why it wasn't, that's why my mom had to, you know, force me to do certain things. Cause I'm like, I'm not knowing it's, it's just in me. You know what I mean? It's like all this stuff is self-evident to me. It's like the only way it's not is if you, you cut off from sourced or, you know what I mean? Or you just not, I don't know, being a being, I don't want to say, I don't know what it is, but I know for me, it's always, I always have aversions to stuff that is not of God, whether I know they are or not. Um, but anyway, the point is, is like, that's what I mean. Like the left hand path goes too far into sacrifice and you know just trying to control god's will and all that stuff and then the right hand path goes too far into like keeping the authority outside of yourself to where you you feel like you're such a wretch that there's nothing that you can do better and then you never do and you'd be stuck here in this you know matrix and your soul gets um you know recycled back in into the matrix rather than going back to source <laughs> i'm not laughing at that happening but uh it's crazy. I'm like, a, yeah, I'm, I'm going to just leave it at that. But yeah, I think, I think I talked about everything that I wanted to say, but the point of the point of everything is, is like religion is not going to save your soul. Like doomsday prepping is not going to save your soul pointing out. It's like, if y'all did this, we wouldn't be, you know, if y'all would just wake up, like, None of none of that is going to save anybody's soul. Going to church every Sunday is not going to save your soul. It's like your connection to Christ and understanding who your creator is and moving through him. Christ consciousness is what's going to save. It's like <laughs> he didn't put this stuff in there for, for no reason. And it's like it's so crazy to me. They could do whatever to this book. They could take 
They could, <laughs> they could take books out. They could switch the Lord, you know, referring to the devil or whatever, or Satan or Lucifer. They they could switch out words. They could do whatever. They can they could do whatever they want. It does not change the obviousness of Christ consciousness and how simple the middle path is. It's like it's it's not thinking that you're more important than God. If you understand that you are God, then it's like you you don't have a self. You know what I mean? It's like we're we're all just cells in His body. It's like He He the Creator God is who I'm referring to. It's like all of this is experience is an experience it experience in itself it's like even satan and the devil um and you know i don't want to get back into my hierarchy of source thing because i feel like i'm just well i mean i am it's just going to beat it into your head it's like god allows the devil to exist so like the only th- fighting the devil that that is what fight <laughs> like what what are we talking about it's like all you got to do is keep your Keep your minds on, keep your mind on Christ and Christ consciousness and like, you know, doing what you came here to do your mission. So, you know, you can return back to source. Yeah, there's so there's so many passages in my head. I don't remember what specific one, but it's like he'd be saying so specific, like focus on you <laughs> um, because you are God. It's like the Elohim is the one that came in and said, we're better than everybody. So we say you should do this and you should follow this law and y'all can't do this no more. It's like that is not of God. It's like real leaders don't have to force people to follow them. It's like real leaders, real leaders just they're, they're in, you know, that narrow gate. They just in that narrow path. They doing what they do and they don't care if you, you know, it's like you're going to follow them because you see their fruits. They don't have to say nothing to you. If you ask them, they will because they also not a gatekeeper, but. Yeah, I'm rapping, but um, but that's that's my thing. Really seeing how much the Holy Spirit is an usher for God, being obedient and open to those messages, not feeling like you need some type of power outside of yourself to to reach God, to attain Christ consciousness, to get back to your creator um, and source, and to navigate these tricky waters that we're in right now in this like transition of time and humanity and consciousness yeah it it just is what it is it's like it's it's only christ everything else is just an amalgamation of him or you know some type of way to get get you the message and um yeah that's my <laughs> i don't know that that's my video today i didn't laugh i didn't cry um it is what it is but uh yeah i hope everyone has a beautiful day i hope that you're um you know, it's your your path is clear at, you know, every step of the way as long as you are just open to the word of God and the Holy Spirit and all the ways he works. There is not one way. There is not one religion. There is not one nothing. Like God is the ultimate puppet master. Like these my God can fight. I don't I don't know about yours, but um but yeah, I hope everyone has a beautiful day. And thank you for listening. Um, I'm going to get this YouTube video system, whatever, together. Thank you all for um, just hearing me. And, um, yeah, talk soon.